gravitation. The scientist who founded the concept behind the gravitation is Sir Isaac Newton. He was from England. Newton proposed the book name The Principia in which laws of motion, equations of motion and theory of gravity were studied. Newton with his theory of gravity mathematically derived Kepler's law. His major discoveries were calculus, gravitation, rocket science, reflecting telescope. Introduction to gravitation In this figure, we can see the gravitational force between the earth and the moon. Now, here is an apple tree on the earth. Apple from the tree falls towards the ground in the vertical direction. Thus, the force of an apple on the tree is towards the center of the earth. Kepler's law. What is Kepler's law? The mathematical derivation of the theory of gravity is Kepler's law. We will study here three different laws. Let's start with Kepler's first law. The orbit of a planet here Earth is an ellipse. Let's consider two focus F1 and F2 inside the ellipse. We will consider any of these focus as the position of the sun. So let's take here F2 as S that is position of the sun. Therefore, the Kepler's first law states that the orbit of a planet is an ellipse with the sun at one of the foci. Next is Kepler's second law. Kepler's second law is also known as law of areas. Consider a line joining between the sun and the earth at position A. Let's assume that earth from position A sweeps to position B in one month. So here the area covered will be ASB. Also consider a line joining from sun to the earth at position C. Again we will assume that earth from position C sweeps to D in one month. Thus the area covered will be CST. Hence ASB is equal to area CST. Therefore the Kepler's second law states that the line joining the planet and the sun sweeps equal areas in equal intervals of time. Kepler's third law. The time taken by the earth to complete one revolution is T. Here the line represents the distance between the sun and the earth. This distance will vary according to the different positions of the earth. Due to this reason we will take Average distance is equal to R. So, according to Kepler's third law, the square of its period of revolution around the sun, that is T square, is directly proportional to the cube of the mean distance of planet from the sun, that is Newton's Universal Law of Gravitation. Here we can see gravitational force between two objects where M1 is the mass of first object and M2 is the mass of second object. D be the distance between the two objects 
and F represents force between these two objects. According to Newton's universal law of gravitation, force is directly proportional to the product of the masses that is m1 and m2. Force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance that is 1 by d square. When both are combined, we get f proportional to m1 m2 by d square. Let's replace the proportional sign with constant g. Therefore, f is equal to g m1 m2 by d square, where g represents constant of proportionality or universal gravitational constant. SI unit of g. Now we will find SI unit of gravitational constant g. SI is an acronym representing system international. SI unit is also known as MKS system of units where M represents meter which is for distance, K represents kilogram which is for mass and S represents second which is used for time. Here we can see the mathematical formula of universal law of gravitation which is F is equal to G M1 M2 by D square. From this, we will calculate the value of G. Firstly, we will shift D square from the denominator to the numerator of the left hand side. Then, then we will shift M1 and M2 from the numerator to the denominator of the left hand side. Now, to find the SI unit of G, we will write the units of each terms. First, unit of force is Newton. Unit of distance is meter. Unit of mass is kilogram. Finally, the SI unit of G is Newton meter square per kilogram square. Thank you for watching.